All right. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening and greetings to our venerable monks and nuns. And also good evening to our friends uh, who are watching us live on Facebook and YouTube. And it is a, a great joy to have our biweekly sutra discussion with uh, our venerable colleagues uh, who are joining uh, from uh, different cities. Uh, so I will uh, introduce the venerable monks and nuns to you. First of all, let us uh, uh, begin the session by paying respect and homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Tassa three times together. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. I pay my respect and homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened Buddha. Uh, dear friends, <clears throat> As I said, this is such a great joy to have the uh, presence of the venerable monks and nuns from different cities. As Buddha mentioned in the uh, Mangala Sutta, the discourse on the blessings, one of the great blessings is to have the, to, to, to be able to see the venerable monks and nuns, the monastics, Samana Anancha Dasanang Etam Mangala Muttamang, and I think, uh, Every two weeks, uh, our friends uh, get to uh, see all these uh, faces from, and these verbal monks and nuns are doing amazing job in their uh, areas. So today we have a uh, uh, venerable Katugastu uh, Paratha who is joining us from Washington, DC. And we have Bante Vansananda joining us from uh, Niagara Falls, so Buffalo, in New York state. And we have Bante Horana Anuruddha. He's joining us uh, from Cambridge, uh, Ontario, Canada. And uh, we have Venerable Shaikadita, who is joining us from Montenegro. It's a midnight for you. I'm very happy to have you. Uh, then we have Venerable Tridau uh, joining us from uh, Florida, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, right? Yeah. And uh, we have Venerable Shanta Sobana. Uh, he's joining us from uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles. And we have Venerable uh, Bhante Ananda Kalubovila. He's joining us from uh, Cambridge, uh, Ontario, Canada. And we have Bante Kusala, of course, he's here with me in Toronto, Mississauga. And then we have Bante uh, Jinananda joining us from uh, Ottawa, Canada. Uh, then we have uh, 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 Venerable Dharni, uh, who is joining us at the Dhamma Center, Virginia, USA, uh, in Washington, DC. We also have the presence of Bante uh, Sananapala Tero, who is, but he's, uh, he has his uh, video camera off. Uh, he's joining us from uh, Vancouver, uh, Canada. And uh, uh, our uh, monks and nuns uh, who went on, uh, on retreat, and they are still actually on retreat. Uh, so uh, I think by next time, our next discussion, we will be able to have more presence of the variable monks and nuns in North America. So, uh, but I'm very happy uh, to have uh, all of you for today's uh, discussion. And also I would like to 
uh, welcome all our friends who are watching uh, this discussion uh, of, on YouTube and Facebook Live. So I have a kind request uh, from all our friends. Uh, if possible, please uh, uh, share this uh, program on your social media timeline for the greater benefit of your friends and colleagues uh, who might benefit from today's uh, discussion. So uh, dear friends, uh, today we are going to talk about the Dasa Anusati, 10 reflections uh, these are uh, 10 forms of meditation practices. Um, we, uh, I remember, uh, you may remember some uh, weeks ago, about uh, I think uh, an end of uh, January, uh, we had a special discussion on the difference between the sati and anusati, mindfulness and recollection. Uh, so we uh, had a great discussion, and uh, so there was a, a kind of uh, a, a thought and intention or liking to have the second discussion on the uh, recollections on the Anusatis. Uh, but due to other global uh, issues like war and conflict, we had to do some uh, discussions on those timely uh, issues and the problems and people actually really enjoyed uh, the, those discussions. So today we are having the discussion on the Anusati. So for first, uh, I would like to invite Bhante Kusala to give an overview of the Anusati. And I know all of you are well versed in these uh, meditation techniques and uh, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, uh, raise your hand uh, if you would like to uh, make contribution or explain uh, or tell a story about the uh, Anusatis. And dear friends, we are uh, we also very uh, happy to have uh, Venerable Sister Kema. I think she's joining. Uh, Sister Kema, where are you? <laughs> I think you have you come off. Uh, and she's joining from India, and we have Bante uh, Kamalasiri, who is joining us from Minnesota. So welcome. Uh, so Bante Kusala, over to you. Give us an overview of the uh, Dasanusa, the 10 re recollections. Thank you, Bante. Namami Sangham. Um, so first, <clears throat> I will give a summary of the 10 recollections. Well, recollection uh, is uh, anusati, uh, which really means in simple terms, you continuously think about something. And by doing so, you come to a cessation of your suffering, uh, to dispassion, to disenchantment. So these are the goals of uh, these recollections. There are 10 of these, and we will be unwrapping all these 10. Uh, in today's discussion, in our previous, one of our previous discussions, we talked about what anusati really means and what sati really means. Uh, so uh, you can go back to that video for further information on anusati, recollection, um, and sati, mindfulness. <clears throat> but I think they are combined here in one way that we continuously remember or establish mindfulness. Um, with one of these 10 um, ways and ultimately you bring it to the fruition, to the final result of achieving Nibbana, ending of all sufferings. So the first one of these is Buddha Nusati, a recollection of the qualities of the Buddha, you know, why someone is a Buddha, what makes a person a Buddha, how great his qualities are, you know, how free his mind from attachment um, and how noble his uh, living, uh, his, uh, his way of life is. Um, and nine qualities uh, of the Buddha, famously uh, known um, in the Tipisogata, in the famous chanting, can also be used for this recollection. Uh, so the second one is uh, Dhamma Anusati. Recollection of Dhamma, how quickly you can realize Dhamma 
and know the six qualities of Dhamma in the Swakhato Bhagavata, in that chanting that we do every day. And the third one is Sanghanusati, recollection of the qualities of Sangha, the noble ones who follow the path in uh, path this, you know, presented by the Buddha. So you, you use the Supatipanno Gatha or any other way you can uh, recollect the qualities of uh, the Sangha. And then we go to the recollection of virtue, Sila, Sila Anusati. So the first three, first three is Buddha Anusati, the second one is Dhamma Anusati, the third one is Sangha Anusati. After these three, the, uh, the triple gem, we go to virtues, the Sila, which is about you. Uh, your unspotted, unbroken virtues is continuously reflected in such a way that it leads you to the cessation, to dispassion. So the next one is uh, recollection of generosity, how generous you are, how much you have let go, how, how much you have renounced, and um, what, uh, you know, what made your mind to be so free, so simple, so you can think about these qualities in that recollection. And it leads you to cessation. And the recollection of devas, this is called devatanusati. <clears throat> um, the previous one is chaganusati, this one is devatanusati. So you think about heavenly beings, you know, many planes of many existence in heaven, many different heavenly realms and you discuss, you know, you think about them in your mind and what makes one a divine being, you know, what quality, do you have those qualities to, to achieve those states, you know, uh, so you can recollect, recollect these qualities uh, in your mind, in your practice until you achieve uh, cessation. And the next one is Anapanasati which is very famous, mindfulness of in-breath and out-breath. Um, so this too leads you to final cessation. And the next one is Maranusati, uh, com continuously reflecting on death, that we all die, and how it leads you to the cessation. You think about it uh, not in a depressing way, but in a way that is productive to your practice, ultimately leading to Nibbana. Then you do the recollection of a body, Kaya Gata Sati, many different ways you can uh, practice repulsiveness of this body. Um, 32 elements, th 32 parts of the body, four elements and nine stages of the body in decay and all these uh, different ways you can practice it. And the last one is Upasamanusati. Um, this is recollection of stilling your mind to achieve calmness in such a way that it leads you to final cessation. So I will um, also share, share, I think, um, a story, maybe two, maybe three, uh, depending on the time. Uh, so there is this uh, uh, one story uh, of Venerable Mahatis. Uh, we find this in Buddhist literature. Um, he was um, so much into recollecting the qualities of the Buddha. And even on days that he can't visit a Buddha statue uh, or Chetia, a large shrine in some sacred city, sacred place, he would still keep thinking of the qualities of the Buddha. And uh, on one night, you know, he kind of focused on the moonlight and he was filled with joy as he was recollecting the qualities of the Buddha. And he rose into the air and appeared in that shrine, the tupa, where he wanted to be. And everybody asked, you know, how did you get here? And he said, I was only thinking of the qualities of the Buddha mm. and this joy arose in me and I'm here. And this also happened to a lady in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is also found in Buddhist literature. She was pregnant. So her parents told her, 
you know it's not it's not good for you to wander around and walk in the in the shrine area like this it's unsafe for you but she is so much wanted to go listen to dhamma listen to uh, to to you know offer uh, lamps at the shrine uh, but her parents told her to stay home so reluctantly she stayed home um, but she you know focused in that direction and from the distance she can see the lights she can see the lamps and she can see see the shrine from the distance and that too was an evening and there was moonlight and there was so much um, joy arose in her and she rose into the air she reached to, she she reached the shrine before her parents got there and they were so surprised you know, how could, how did you make it to this place before we before us you know she said i was thinking of the qualities of the buddha and this joy arose in me and now here i am so these are inspirational stories and i think later i will share another story if uh, if there is time i think this will be uh, good for now for an introduction mm -hmm. we will hear from the other venerable monks thank you yeah, thank you, Bhante Kusala, for giving us an overview of the 10 reflection Dasanusati and also telling uh, the story uh, how when uh, a, a, a devotee or a meditation practitioner chooses to practice Buddha Nusati and how uh, his or her mind gets filled with joy. And I think uh, uh, now uh, I, I would like to uh, just ask a question from all the venerable monks and nuns uh, who are present in this discussion. Uh, like, uh, how do you, like, of course, we, we see that uh, there's a, oh, I see that Uparta uh, Nayakahadar uh, said, excellent, you know, it is a great explanation. <laughs> Thank you, Nayakahadar, for uh, giving such uh, motivation to us. <laughs> so, um, is, is how how do you understand the the practice of anusati? Uh, like uh, I know there are uh, 10, uh, 40 types of meditation techniques, and uh, as we you know, uh, all, every meditation technique uh, is uh, is given to a meditation practitioner based on his or her own temperament is, uh, or behavior uh, practice, and uh, so it worked out. So. Now, uh, in, in your understanding, how do you see the Anusati practice? Are these practices uh, suitable for everyone? Anyone? Uh, yes, Uparata uh, Andrew from Washington, DC. Uh, you have to unmute, Bante Uparata, unmute, please. Anusati is a very important topic. And yeah. uh, we have to concentrate our mind. We have to always awake uh, and alert and uh, mindfully uh, keeping our uh, practice day to day. And uh, that's why the that's the old anusati. And according to the that topic, we are living and uh, uh, our attitude and our activities keeping up. That's very important. Mindfully act with anusati and. Uh, that also out of that 10, the important things, our Theravada tradition, we yeah. are always practicing Chatura Rakha. Yeah. Buddha Nusati, Metta Nusati, Asubha Nusati, Marana Nusati. That's a four things very important. The Mahavihara uh, traditional way, they uh, reciting uh, the evening chanting, that yeah. is thing as a traditionally uh, than monastic uh, side that is very uh, even the morning and even in both both time they're reciting the recitation very helpful to us to understand and thinking about monastic life about uh, the quality of the buddha uh, and quality of the loving kindness uh, quality of the uh, asubha and uh, impermanency and uh, uh, then uh, death. That's all. That things very important to keep our life to uh, purifying from the away from the all the uh, 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 all the uh, 
that's why this anusati practice very helpful beside that there's a 10 anusati also very important as uh, someone who uh, practicing retreat or something uh the keeping up for the uh, very good uh, meditator it's a very good helpful uh, topic object to practice that's mm -hmm. very helpful and uh, however the um, the the sangha community of the sangha and uh, the lady who following that uh, uh, Buddha's path, there's a poor anusat is very important out of that 10. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. Oh, thank you, Bhante Uparatana, for uh, giving such a wonderful explanation about uh, uh, anusat is how we practice. And of course, uh, in, 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 in growing up as, as novice monks, you know, <laughs> I say we had to, uh, do some um, at least four reflections, Chaturarak, as you said, uh, for protection uh, daily in the morning, in the evening, and uh, so even 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 now, I, uh, we monks, uh, either in group or personally, we still continue reciting those uh, Chaturarak for protections, mainly for uh, for uh, re recollections, and I think uh, it's very important now. Uh, I know uh, Bante Santo Sobana raised his hand, but before you, I think I saw kind of uh, Sister Kema, kind of, uh, with, no? Okay. Uh, Bante Santo Sobana from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, your thoughts, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Venerable Sirs. And uh, so, when we come to these recollections, uh, and, uh, we, we teach uh, every day here. And when it come to new students, especially with this is very important because when newcomer come to practice meditation, mm -hmm. especially they have their own behavior and they have their organized mind itself. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, these recollections give them a very good foundation to start mm -hmm. because that even though that we have the, the final, de final destination as the Nibbana, before we go into that, these recollections give the, the good avenue. It's kind of like a giving them a window to see through the, their views. Because otherwise, sometimes when it comes to meditation, it's always a hold with the values, behavior, attitude, that kind of things. So these three, uh, 10 recollections, the whole, the practitioner or the yogi into the exactly to the right path, go towards the Nibbana. So that is very important because nowadays when it comes to meditation, and as you know, it is a very uh, uh, wider uh, topic because there are many different kinds of meditations come to even with the Buddha's teaching also that the people try to explain in different ways, especially in the Western. Mm -hmm. But in the, the Eastern with the Theravada the tradition, it's very clearly that uh, authentically that uh, guarded the, the Buddha's teaching with these uh, recollections. So, and when it come to that, especially uh, the beginning, the foundation and, uh, we, to get into the tranquility state, because most of time that we, we, we practice with the visualization and the chanting and sometimes uh, repetition with words, but still that some kind of techniques, I'm not going to mention here, but some kind of techniques not allow the practitioner or the yogi to get into the real tranquility state. But when it come to these 10 recollections without hiding anywhere without going to any other direction. It deeply has a deeper connection to the tranquility state and from there, because the very meaning when it comes to our practice of our, our teachings and when it comes to the Buddha's meditation, and there is no doubt the main purpose is to get out of the five hindrance. Mm -hmm. So through these recollections, it deeply cut down all the the mental formation related, related to the five hindrance. Mm -hmm. And that way, whoever practice this and has an opportunity, it's kind of like a getting a ladder and put into the exactly to the right direction 
go towards the the nibbana so whoever practice this i think they can gain a great benefit out of this mm mm-hmm. yeah so thank it is you. A, it's a kind of like a good uh, the the solid foundation towards the vipassana aha uh-huh. so it, it so you what you're saying is it lays the foundation uh uh for the great realization the ultimate realization of nibbana yes okay. so and as a, uh, mostly there there are discussions from the ancient time to today some says that uh, ten recollections not help for the uh, vipassana or the liberation and uh, there are big, but this deeply connected to the tranquility state but when you that it is very important because when it come to the tranquility state or the samadhi or the one pointness and people achieved it different different ways and sometimes uh, that whatever the samadhi they achieve according to their own point of view it is going to be different so but here these recollections deeply has a relationship to the vipassana or the attaining to the nibbana the very reason is that this all recollections deeply has ability to get out of the self centered view so once the person who ever practice this and once the person has ability to get out of the self centered view and deeply it has a connection to understand or the experience the the causations so who ever experience the causations and it has ability to get into the flow and uh, enter to more higher experience mm. yeah thank uh, thank you uh, uh bante santo sobana uh, uh i we see uh bante ananda uh, raised his hand uh, i know uh, bante anand is is your first time uh, joining this discussion i'm, I'm i i will i will, i heard that you uh do a marvelous job give dhamma talks nicely and uh, what's your uh, uh, thought on today's uh, uh, topic the 10 re- recollections yeah uh, thanks a lot uh, bante and in fact thank you very much for inviting uh, us uh, for this in, uh, this discussion so uh, it's uh, adding on to what uh, our previous bante just mentioned i see when uh, buddha was explaining things that uh, he address a whole gamut of uh, a spectrum of people and even uh, if if the the, the oposata sutra uh, vis- to visaka uh, mm-hmm. it says that it is been uh, the first question is that uh, there are three types of uh, posata one mm-hmm. for the cowherd one for the of the giants and the, the one of the noble ones the arya uposata yeah. and uh, i think uh, most of the time most of these uh, meditation techniques are associated associated with two things as per my uh, recollection uh, the first is samaditti without uh, having that uh, there you it would be taken to a whole different uh, area and the other thing is the guidance of an ad- advanced or a, a more experienced teacher someone who has uh, already found some aditi and who has uh, f- figured out the ways of meditation uh, otherwise it would be a blind leading blind and again uh, relating to what uh, previous month they mentioned uh, i think uh, that uh, this can be done in a few stages so mm-hmm. for example i'll take a very gross example when i was a boy when i was at school we used to do this uh, sport called rowing and uh, rowing is a very physically intense uh, exercise uh, like a sport and uh, there's this uh, particular match called 2k where you have to row for 2000 meters 2 kilometers basically and uh, we do practicing so our physical uh, form is very important however there's this phase where you are physically you get into a phase after about 1000 kilometers you're totally numb and uh, more than the physical stamina it's about the mental stamina so when we used to practice we used to uh, i didn't know that it was called meditation back in the day when i was uh, 20 years old 18 years old but we used to sort of uh, visualize uh, what would happen uh, when we pass each uh, meter mark and uh, that was a fantastic uh, uh, exercise in fact it has helped a lot of people uh, when they are doing their own uh, rowing uh, uh, game so i think uh, that is one of the very basic layer of uh, Uh, this recollection is I, i won't even call it recollection but it's mm. sort of a what if scenario so i think uh, even maranano says it maranano says it sati uh, people use a lot of this what if scenario what will happen if this happened to me sort of a thing uh, and i find that uh, it's a stepping stone it's probably not what uh, buddha ideally mentioned probably it's what buddha mentioned uh, also uh, but uh, from that stepping stone onwards from that what if scenario making uh, which again if you are not 
uh, under a proper guidance. Uh, if, if, if you don't uh, talk to a proper teacher or Sangha, or if you have not figured out what Samadhi it is, that is going to lead you to a whole different uh, aspect altogether. Mm. But then from that point onwards, I think uh, another interesting thing is the recollection. And I find recollection especially like uh, Buddha Nusati. Uh, back in the day when I was meditating for uh, with, the, with Buddha Nusati Karmasthana, I think mm. it's a great way, especially if you have that deep uh, uh, faith inside, it's a beautiful and a marvelous way to, for you to get into certain uh, states of mind. Like uh, Dhyana, if you want to, like it's an easier way to get into Dhyana using uh, these type of recollections. So it is not really a what-if scenario, but a, more of a recollection uh, of, uh, of uh, a particular uh, quality. Like uh, Bhante uh, Kusala was mentioning about that, uh, the incidence of the uh, lady uh, monk, uh, nun. And the third uh, part is, I think uh, there's a different, uh, at least to my understanding, that there's a different form of recollection that which is not uh, just recalling things or visualizing things, but you tend to relate with your deep understanding to things. So I don't know a proper way to put it, but sometimes you can uh, uh, relate it to a deep understanding, which is not necessarily recollection. And then I find uh, after that anusati, there's the mindfulness sati uh, of that uh, uh, whole thing, which leads to that. And uh, adding to previous uh, bhante, I think uh, a lot of people say that it's only about uh, uh, getting into a dhyana or uh, trying to get a siddhi. Siddhi is like a mundane uh, uh, ability. Uh, but uh, I think it beautifully leads all the way to Nibbana and it's a beautiful uh, way of uh, starting meditation. Mm. Well, th- uh, thank you. It's a, be- a beautiful explanation, uh, Bhante Ananda. And I'm, I'm very happy to hear all this perspective. Uh, and also here's a kind of reminder to all our friends who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube Live. If you have any uh, questions, uh, please uh, make a comment. Uh, I am monitoring your questions, your comments, and uh, uh, I, I will take the question and I will ask your question from all the venerable monks and nuns. So now I, I this, this just occurred to me as you were dis, uh, talking about this, explaining the 10 recollections is uh, now in, in modern psychology, uh, uh, there's a, a form of uh, the, the techniques is called the shifting attention. Uh, so like, you know, people are getting stressed out. People are feeling uh, anxious. People are getting uh, panic attacks. People are, are depressed and people are in pain. People are f- in fear. People are uh, feeling guilty. And so uh, be- uh, this is because uh, I think people are stuck with uh, something negative, right? something like a a dark side of their life, maybe something that happened to them. So they're stuck and and they are thinking about it all the time, the negative stuff. Now, my question is, does anesthetic would help someone uh, to get out of stress, anxiety, depression, the negative side of their life? And of course, as we understand, the the anesthetic is about less, thinking something positive. Uh, maybe uh, p- minds, are, uh, minds are stuck with the lower perspective, lower consciousness, lower things, lower experiences. Is this technique a way to elevate those people to the higher consciousness, to get the higher perspective? Uh, now we have, okay. Uh, where about Trida hold your thought, okay? Where was Sister Kema from India? You have to unmute yourself. Uh, Sister Kema, un- un- yeah, yeah. This is this is what I wanted to talk about. This is yeah. a very important, very important point. Um, first of all, let me run through a thing here very quickly. Um, to experience nibbana the first time. You, you have to fall into cessation into Naroda first, and you must reach this right condition. And so we look and say, what is that? That's the empty condition, an empty spot of thinking, empty thinking, stopping all other thinking and just watching. And right condition to, uh, to um, is uh, an example of letting go of all thinking. And in order to do this, this is all attached to purifying and retraining the brain, which is what we're all talking about. And the interesting part 
of this, the interesting part of this is that um, to, uh, to accomplish this, the brain, if we look at the brain, the brain is incredible because it's not just thinking thoughts for right now, it's running the whole entire body. It's the main control center of the body. If we, we say that we're going to believe mind is the forerunner of all states, mind made are they, we're saying that's where everything starts. And the Buddha did this remarkable thing. When he was teaching his meditation, I, I was discussing the other day, they were saying, oh, he was so this and so that. I said, he was an activist. He was a rebel. <laughs> he changed the meditation that was happening all around him from the subject and the object to the subject is the object. And not only this body is the object, but the actual control center is going to be the principal object. We're going to go to the head of the class. We're going to examine the mind specifically. Okay, the brain. In order to do that, in order to, if you start to explain to someone, what is this purification and how does Nibbana happen? How does that, how does it all occur? Medically speaking, all of the spinning, all the spinning of each single thought that's spinning around in dependent origination is not like just one circle. It's more like a slinky. <laughs> You know, a slinky was that long metal coil thing we had going down the stairs and it had all these coils in it, you see, and they're spinning all the time. And this is a remarkable experience when you start thinking about this slinky and it's spinning like that, how are you going to eliminate that? And so I play, I like to play a game and say, okay, why don't we experiment to see if what is left when we let go of all our thoughts. And when we look at that one, I always go back to uh, Bada Karata Sutta, the past and future thoughts and try to get you to just think about present thoughts. And what happens, the question about this, medically speaking, that's really interesting to the medical community is when you do experience neurota and everything else shuts down and there's an absolute stop, and then you reboot your mind and you come out of that and the, this opening happens and the Nibbana, the experience is this remarkable thing. We don't, I can't tell you if that's really what's happening with what, I'm, what we're doing, but what does happen, I'm not gonna say, the reason I said that is because you, we, people wanna talk about Nibbana, but the thing is nobody knows what that was because none of us were there in the time of the Buddha. We all need to just accept that fact. But what is happening is when we're attempting to let everything else go and watch and see what happens to your brain, to your body, to everything. If you do experience where everything, all the other thoughts have stopped and your curiosity point is to observe what can happen with that brain and the potential of it also after it happens, if you did get to the place of cessation and why does your facial expression change and your eyes become natural and bright and your skin change. And why is all this energy come flooding into you when it happens? And why is everything sharper with hearing and sharper with seeing and smelling and tasting and everything for a while after this happens? What is that that's happening? This is what fascinates me. Mm. Now, what you're all talking about is perfectly in line with this part of it. And we had an experience once the effect of this is remarkable. So I'll tell you a little story. We did a, we did, I did a retreat, I think with Banti, it was back in 2017, I want to say in Kazakhstan. And this retreat in Kazakhstan, there were many things that were happening that were unusual for the people who were attending. Many had never had a chance to go to a retreat before. And um, there was a couple of strange things. And one of them was sleepwalking. There were two people that had a problem with sleepwalking. Now, nobody knows how to explain the, the anatomy of sleepwalking and what the problem really is. But Bhante got this idea of Anusati, uh, of let's just have her do the um, nine qualities of the Buddha and teach her how to do it on the beads. But the first thing we did with her was we did Buddha Dhamma Sangha. That's all very simple things. You're not exposed to the Buddhist world. Let's start here. Buddha Dhamma Sangha, Buddha Dhamma Sangha, Buddha Dhamma Sangha, all the time, when you're walking, all the time, when you're thinking, even doing that and understanding the nine qualities of the Buddha, when we put her on the beads, the sleepwalking stopped. 
the sleepwalking stopped completely. Now, why did the sleepwalking stop completely? Because of the frightening experience she had had, and she had been exposed to a lot of PTSD experiences. So you're talking, when, uh, when Bunty Sarnapol is talking about this, or the questioner is talking about this, uh, you're talking about, is this effective with PTSD? And, and uh, the whole idea of thought, uh, thought um, transference, moving the thought, of the mind to another place is exactly where you start in the beginning of all this. And that's what we're touching on. And that's what we're teaching. And this can be not necessarily only from Buddhist religion, but from any religion. Uh, for instance, if I go back to the nuns, some of them were not sleeping so well when they started that retreat with me. And we did this kind of thing of the basic things to think about. And we did thought replacement. If you go to the Vaibharava Sutta, that's the Buddha's example of thought replacement, immediate replacement, 16 examples of, you know, if you're, if you are, are fearful, well, then think of courageousness, mm -hmm. you know, and it goes down a whole list here uh, with the mindful of ill will, I have, I will sit with loving kindness instead, you're giving yourself a directive, and that's all you're going to think about. Anything else that comes in your mind, you teach them, never mind, let go, relax, smile, and come back to just this thought and see if that thought fades away. So we're, what are we learning? We are teaching people a marvelous uh, communication system that everyone has in their body. So you say, is this available for everybody? Probably to different degrees. It is easy or it is hard because of the thoughts and crowdedness in their mind, all the different personalities. I think there's 64 of them or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. But it's going to be healthy for any one of those 64 people to practice taking something that is causing a problem in their life. And when I had a student just last week who, um, okay, uh, this was stop the sleepwalking was the best example I can give you. But I had someone last week who was so insistent on not trying what I was trying to ask her to do, which was, why don't you consider the fact that maybe nothing is happening to you? Mm. And they looked at me really strange. I said, because you see, the truth of the matter is everything is happening from you, not to you. Well, that never occurred to her. And even in the conversation of trying to get her to try, it took like two days to get her to try to do this, but her, her fighting against it was, oh, no, no, this is about me. Everything's on me. Everything is my fault. Everything's happening to me. It's all on me. And it must be my fault because I must have done something wrong. And there, why do you stop, keep saying that? What if it's not? So instead of saying it's this way, it's not that way, or this is true and that's not, or we're right and you're wrong, we're saying, but what if? And this is where the medical community is with neurocognitive science. This is where the psychology, the research is all going to look specifically and to say, just try this, this thought transference of if you're, if uh, what happens to you, if you're really down and really depressed, try smiling. And when you just smile, what happens to your mind? Mm. And I have a whole room. I like to do that with them early in the retreat and simply say, now, at the moment I tell, okay, everybody just smile and I'll, I'll make them, I'll go and poke them with an ostrich feather or tickle them and say, you have to smile. Now, tell me what happens in your mind, in your head and up here in your, the top part of your body into your heart, what happens to you when you smile? Because scientifically, all the other stuff fell away. And for us, for a moment, if you can experience it's possible, then you can expand it. And, and the Anusati saved me greatly when I had an accident years back. And I look back and say, what is it that made me survive through that? I had a, a sort of cast, a big cast on, and I couldn't move around a lot. And I was so frightened of it and, and wrapped up in what it would mean in the future and everything. I couldn't just relax at all. I couldn't clear my mind. And somebody said, why don't you start 
thinking about this and not thinking about that, which doesn't occur to you when you're in a tremendous amount of pain. And I didn't want to take the pain pills. I didn't want to take them. So I was trying to find a way to help. And so when you're talking about pain, when you have someone think about, about this instead of what's happening in the sarcoma inside the bone in a bone cancer, and you have them put their attention over here, this comes back to the base, basic thing that started John Kabat-Zinn on his whole trip. It was in a cancer ward with terminally ill children where he was trying to see what would happen if he, they, you take the thought and you place it on a computer game, asteroids, I think it was very early where you shoot the little things down that are coming down the screen. And if you concentrate on that, how many times will the patient touch the button to get the heavy duty pain medication for that next hour versus when they don't have the game and they're just lying there in pain? Is there a difference? And guess what? There is a difference. Mm. So what he, he got to was the beginning of discovering mindfulness can be directed by your personal attention. And this is extremely important. And this is what these recollections help us do. Yeah, That's thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Sister Kema. I think uh, neuroscience, uh, uh, neuroscientists uh, would be very interested in doing more research into the Anusati practice, I think it would be nice. Uh, uh, maybe we can are. encourage, they are. encourage the, they are the doing scientists this. to do more uh, research into this. When you do this uh, uh, recollection uh, and then what happens in your brain. I see you yeah. brought a great uh, idea and we will explore more on that. Thank you, Sister Kema. So we have five venerable monks <laughs> raise their hand. A uh, venerable Trudeau from uh, Florida. Uh, what's on your thought? Thank you for having me. Uh, salutations to all the most venerables, venerables, and uh, ayas, bikus, and bikunis for having me. I'd like to answer the question that you had in regards to modern day negative yeah. thinking youths, negative thinking um, behaviors, and how we can apply uh, the anusatis um, at the recollections into cultivating a the total opposite, a happy, tranquil, peaceful, compassionate, and kindful mind, is that I, uh, what we know about the mind, that it is very driven to think negatively. Mm -hmm. It had to, it, it had to, to ensure. Um, and I have told my students that when you, if I let you loose at night, walking into the forest, and you step on a rope, your mind will automatically believe that it is a snake to ensure your survival. And likewise, uh, millions of years ago, we were programmed biologically. Comes now, we have the ability to think with the prefrontal cortex, um, the amygdala, the limbic system, everything we know about neurology. And uh, now without proper awareness, without the sati portion of our teachings, one would fall enslaved to one's own habitual thinking of one's mind. And when left unchecked, the checks and balances of one's mind, then uh, the, the mind's a very violent thing. The jitta is a very violent thing. Um, and we have to use the best available medicine of what the Buddha gave us and how amazing to see the methodology, the methods that he left for us. And so much we have to do as humans um, to get everything in order. And so much do we have to do in order to practice with diligence in order to see the results if that is what we aspire, which is true inner happiness, true inner freedom, true inner liberation. I have found for myself, uh, we monastics hope to inspire by and through our own actions. We monastics uh, hope to aspire all of you laymen and laywomen uh, by where we've been, where we're going, and our future trajectory with our practice. And I have found that for my life uh, at age 34 and meditating 
since I was 14 years old mm -hmm. on the recollection of the Buddha, on the recollection of the Dhamma, the Sangha, on the recollection of Asuba Bhavana, and my favorite, which is meditation on death, that I have found it to give me hope during my darkest times of depression, during my darkest times of anxiety, during the darkest times of bipolar, and all of the mental illness uh, as commonly seen in young people. So I hope that our young audience and many more are watching and are inspired by the methods that he left us 2,565 years ago and how potent it is, the potency of these types of recollections will penetrate Mara at its core. Mm. Uh, that is said with capital letters, and that is said with a lightning bolt, uh, with emphasis here, is that it's extremely uh, effective uh, in regards to the, the violence of the mind and how we, we battle the mind uh, constantly from, from moment to moment. The sensoric cycle uh, from moment to moment experiences and when life comes at you. Mm. Of course, the life of a typical layman and lay women is uh, have husband, wife, kids, uh, siblings, mom and dad that drives them crazy from moment to moment. One moment you're, you're, you're arguing with your girlfriend, the next moment your mom needs you to do something. So it drives you crazy. And the, the totality of your experience at the end of the day, one must ask, am I at peace? And when we operate constantly without meditating, on the choice that we meditate, if they drive us crazy and we get angry and we get angry often, it becomes a habit. One must choose metta, uh, bhavana, to try to overlap or try to treat, try to mitigate and try to lessen one's aversion, which is anger. Mm. And it is uh, very important that, you know, uh, how much we live and operate in our 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours of waking moments. And yet I encourage everyone to try to meditate more and often is because half an hour, you know, really doesn't do it uh, justice. Um, and when you make it into a habit, then change can take place and slowly your mind will be convinced and know how to respond skillfully uh, to the depression, to the negative thoughts, the habituation that has been going on for, for years. And hopefully uh, we introduce to the world today, if they were not aware uh, mm -hmm. of the 10 recollections, now everyone is aware of the multitude and plethora uh, conglomerate of choice that they can choose. So it's a, a good checklist for the laymen and laywomen. And uh, meditation need not be boring. Um, yeah. Typical yeah. Western mind is, Oh, it's boring. What, what are we thinking about when we're sitting here, closing in our eyes and trying to um, focusing on our breath? So when it is boring, you have plenty to choose from here based on the defilements that you have identified. So if such defilements is identified, then one must choose to select. If you have a headache, you would take Tylenol. If you have a, a, a bacterial infection, you would take Cipro. It's no different that when you have anger, you would choose metta. When uh, you are lazy, you would choose death meditation, mara uh, nusati. Um, if, um, if you are greedy, if you are uh, hanging on too much to personal possessions, mm. then one would choose recollection on generosity. Mm. Recollection on generosity, very important. It mitigates greed. Uh, and how do we improve our karma? give more and take less so the more you give and the less that you take in this world the happier you become and that you can also recollect that memory of giving to people and how many have benefited based on your kindful acts mm. uh, additionally uh when when one is too attached we are more attached to our body than anything else then one would recollect on a suba a suba bhavana, mm. uh, the 32 parts of the body uh, and to see the true nature of reality of the body. So uh, I'd like to conclude my, uh, my short talk there. 
uh, and like to yield the microphone back to the, yeah, the thank you thank you very much to do a beautiful explanation and also i i think uh, these these 10 types of recollections are kind of 10 uh, kinds of therapies <laughs> we can take something like that uh, maybe a therapeutic experience uh we can uh discuss more so uh, now I would like to invite the uh, Venerable Ananda. Uh, you raised your hand again. I'm pretty sure you have more to share with us. Yeah, I'm sorry for taking your time. I just had to mention this uh, when Bhante Sarnapal asked the uh, question uh, of the therapeutic usage of uh, the uh, uh, this uh, Anusatis. So I think uh, there's been numerous and a large amount of studies on how meditation helps uh, uh, ADHD or PTSD, all sorts of studies. And uh, this is a particular study, uh, this is particular field, neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, which is sometimes considered as the voodoo of uh, uh, psychotherapy. Uh, but some okay. people don't like it. Uh, okay. However, I find that uh, uh, anusatis has a lot to do with uh, linguistics. It's okay. basically linguistics and uh, uh, neuro-linguistic by nature is uh, how you retrain your mind into a particular form where you want to get uh, propitious uh, or, or better uh, behavioral uh, outcomes using language. So I think uh, Anusati has a lot to do with your inner language, which okay. is not necessarily spoken, but the Vitaka Vichara really. So in a way, you train it uh, into a particular manner and then yeah. you have the outcome on your behavior like uh, Venerable uh, Kema mentioned about this uh, sleepwalking and all these uh, ailments. Uh, right. So I think uh, I wanted to mention that NLP is probably still a very underdeveloped uh, clinical psychological application. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Anusati can uh, affect a lot uh, combined with NLP. Probably it's digressing from the original Nibbana towards mm -hmm. more uh, of therapy. But uh, I think that's a good a point that uh, maybe others can share as well on that subject. Oh, thank Shed you. Light. Thank you, Venerable Ananda. Now, uh... A venerable Anuruddha uh, uh, from Cambridge, uh, uh, Canada. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. What's uh, yeah. what's in your mind? Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us uh, for this uh, great uh, discussion today. Yeah. Uh, the question that you asked uh, earlier was the uh, is is this Anusati, anusati uh, helping to cope with the uh, stress and my uh, anxiety? Yeah. So, uh, according to my understanding, according to my view, all mm. these Anusati, uh, all ten uh, recollection of uh, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and Jyotisattva, all these things, until the uh, mindfulness of body, uh, mindfulness of body, and mindfulness of uh, breathing, Anapanasati, mm. and uh, recollection of peace, until that point. Uh, other, uh, other than these three, all the other Anusati, I can consider as. Uh, Samatha Bhavana. Uh -huh. so, uh, it, it directs you to the Vipassana. So yeah. uh, when we are dealing with the uh, people who are having stress or the anxiety, the anxiety and stress happens when we are thinking about the same thing again and again. Yeah. If we get, uh, if someone, if we lost someone close to us, we are mm -hmm. thinking about him or her and we have a kind of negative feeling and the uh, sadness and it directs and it leads us to uh, anxiety or more depressed mood. Mm -hmm. So a person with that kind of mood or thinking, first thing that we need to uh, make him uh, understand to get out of that situation. So that means that we need to replace his thinking with mm -hmm. something else. So mm -hmm. all these anusati help you to replace your thinking, your thoughts with something else. So all these anusati comes with faith. If you practice that uh, the uh, recall, uh, recollection of Buddha, that means you are thinking about Buddha. So if you have the faith, a great faith on Buddha, you can uh, connect to, you can concentrate on Buddhas about the Buddha. So you are thinking about the Buddha, and mm. you uh, replace the thoughts of your the uh, the uh, lost one with the Buddhas thinking. Like that, you can replace. Uh, you are the, the stressful thoughts with uh, this kind of anusati uh, meditation. Mm. So this meditation practice, but those things are uh, uh, not, uh, these are temporary, uh, the uh, replacement. So mm. again, it will come when once you are uh, uh, not thinking about these things, you, you might go back to your previous states. So mm. this, these are kind of solace you can uh, or kind of anchor point 
that you can uh, replace your the stressful thoughts so after that when you calm down uh, when your mind calm down then you can start the vipassana meditation that mm -hmm. that will help you to understand the four noble truth and get rid of the uh, all the kind of suffering permanently so mm -hmm. to to come to that point you need this kind of anusati or otherwise the, to come to sati you need anusati mm -hmm. so anusati help you to come to uh, or the to practice the sati that is uh, so this anusati are really helpful to uh, dealing with the anxiety and uh, the stress uh, according to my amazing, understanding amazing i i love that i, I think it, it helps you know uh, yeah. even for me those who have uh, uh, come for uh, the spiritual counseling and of yeah. course i i tried uh, uh, you know teaching them or uh, uh, giving them this as a therapy and to see yeah. what happens actually even yesterday somebody came to see me uh, very stressed uh, uh, you know very stressed out and kind of going into depression mode so we did a kind of this uh, ref, uh, you know anusati practice yeah and, uh, i have done too with my some of the my the people who comes to see us yeah it's okay. really helpful to get rid of that kind of uh, the anxiety or stress yes very beneficial thank you yeah now uh, uh, bante j bante jinananda from ottawa uh, I know uh, even a previous discussion, you did not share anything with us. So today I'm happy that you raised your hand. Uh, yeah, I think. Thank you very much, Bhante, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, actually, I'm in a bit of busy environment so that uh, I was preventing raising my hand and sharing anything. Anyway, it's a wonderful discussion about uh, various aspects of ten anusati, ten recollection. Yeah, I, I'm agree to... Uh, 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 I'm agreeing to many points of for those wonderful monks said. Um, what I wanted to share is that, yeah, the, when we look at the ten anusati, uh, the question we should uh, keep in mind if we analyze them in in depth, uh, what kind of uh, uh, outcome we expect from these uh, ten anusati? If you look at the first six, uh -huh. uh, there is one thing that uh, the meditator should expect that is a kind of prasad, you know, by thinking about the Buddha and also the Dhamma and Sangha and Seel and the other thing, uh, we try our best to prepare ourselves for a something for something greater. As uh, Venerable Anur Anuruddha uh, a minute ago said, uh, Anusati is helping for someone to come to Sati, which is wonderful to say because it is according to Satipatta and Sutta, Kaya Anupasana, Vedana Anupasana, Chitta Anupasana, Dhamma Anupasana. So they are all in line with Anusati. So you look at uh, those aspects of uh, Satipatthana so that you are getting ready into absorb uh, uh, get, uh, this, uh, the perfect Sati. So I think uh, first six uh, provide us a kind of faith and uh, the, the, the initial faith is being developed with this practice mm. so that you are getting ready to uh, practice other things like when you practice mindfulness of death, it provides you a sense of urgency. You are going to die and you are going to have the same thing. Just get ready to practice, uh, hang on to something greater. So uh, then Kaya Anupas, uh, mindfulness of breath and other things provide you some ample ground for you to get into deeper levels of the Dharma. So however, when the Buddha said, uh, set these 10 together, the level of uh, mindfulness here with the in and out breathing would be different from what he expect from the Anapana Sati Sutta in Majjhima Nikaya and elsewhere. So I think uh, these 10 uh, provide such a background. And uh, I wanted to uh, share what uh, actually Venerable Anuruddha said, so I do not want to repeat it. Mm -hmm. what i what he said was uh, uh what what he said is confirmed by me and uh, that's what i want to share bante oh thank you thank you bante jananda uh now bante kusala you raised your hand again uh so you gave us an overview i'm pretty sure after listening to all the uh, explanations by the respected monks and nuns uh, you have more thoughts to share with us well bante um so I remember as a child, 
um, learning the nine qualities of the Buddha in that gatha and using it every time when there was a fear, you know, say fear for darkness. Um, and parents or grandma would say, just chant it so and you will be fine. Yeah. You know, that's how we grew up with this, yeah. you know, something larger than you, something that can protect you, something, something that is sacred out there, like the Buddha. And immediately all that fear um, sort of, it doesn't vanish completely, but um, there is an effect of that, you know. There's something to protect me when nothing else is around. Uh, so especially, if, if, you know, as we grew up in uh, Kitulkote village in uh, Uva province, um, uh, there were many elephants, you know, start, you know, starting around six in the evening because we were, our parents were doing vegetable farming. So we had many farmlands around. So elephants love to roam around in this area. But our temple, we don't have cars to get to the temple. We just walk. And in the darkness, when we see a shadow of a tree, sometimes uh, we think it is an elephant. <laughs> so the first thing that comes to our mind is a tipiso, you know, the qualities of the Buddha. And immediately there is this relief or something to protect me. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, gave us a habit, uh, sometimes before even an exam, you know, there is anxiety. So what do we do? We think about Itipiso, the nine qualities of the Buddha to calm us down. So these uh, practices make me think that, you know, other than the spiritual goals, you know, even in the day-to-day -day life, in uh, worldly matters, to say uh, we have used uh, the recollection of the Buddha. Mm. Um, and I love the Vendable Tree Dao's uh, uh, explanations of I loved all the explanations of all the monks. Uh, mm. uh, the way Venerable Tri Dao explained, you know, just like you take medicine for the body, mm -hmm. you also need to look at what your mind needs and uh, you know feed the mind accordingly. Because we tend to think about boys think about girls, girls think about boys. So easy to do that. <laughs> but if we you know instead choose to think about the Buddha, Dhamma. Mm. Sangha, you know, what is the shift, uh, what's the transformation that happens in your mind? Mm. Uh, think about Asubha, you know, Kaya Gata Sati, you know, there's this story about this monk. He was, you know, he identified that he had so much lust in him mm. and he chose to reflect, recollect on the Attika Sanya. <clears throat> uh, this is also found, this is a story found in the Buddhist literature. So Attika Sanya uh, is all about um, thinking about bones in your body. This is just a skeleton, mm -hmm. nothing more, nothing less. You know, don't be attached to it. Um, the, you know, people will put make makeup and hairstyles, and don't look at any of those you know, beautiful clothes. Just look at everybody as a skeleton. So when he was walking to the Anuradhapura city, this monk's name was Thissa, and uh, he's, you know, he saw this beautiful woman and she was dressed uh, nicely and she was running away from her husband. Mm. They had a fight and she was running away. And uh, this monk happened to see her and she smiled. So the monk, you know, didn't react, you know, he went on. Yeah. And a little later, this husband also was coming to look for her. And he asked, he saw the monk and you know, he asked, uh, did you see a woman? <laughs> um, and he said, I did not see a woman. I did not see a man. I only saw a skeleton. <laughs> 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 that was his response. It was working for him. You know, um, the way that our mind can protect us from the danger of falling into the beauty of something, the, the way that mind projects it. This, this gives you this shield of protection. Mm. And you, I think, uh, like your question was whether to choose it based on character. You know, I think Venerable Tri Dao responded to that already. Mm. Yes, you know, depending on what you are dealing with now, you have many flavors, like those flavors of ice cream. Choose one and work on it, and you will get to the 
the peace in a peaceful state of your mind yeah. thank you bande thank you thank you bande kusala i think uh, that that is exactly what uh, buddha uh, said in the dajaga sutra right uh, when you when your mind gets filled with a lot of fear and and, exactly. and all the negativities then instead of thinking of those uh, four uh, deva kings you just uh, reflect on the great qualities of the buddha dhamma and sangha the, the buddha gives the reason why because the uh, buddha's uh, buddha minds are completely free from all those negativities defilements loba dosa moha and so it works and i think uh, uh, in in a, in, a, in a buddhist country in a, i think everyone can relate something like when they got scared and they started they repeating it to be so bhagavara and samma so then all the fear is gone <laughs> they, it helps them become relaxed so uh very about today you you have uh, more to uh, share i think uh, what uh, bante kusala said uh yes thank you and thank you venerable kusala i still consider myself a very 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 junior monk <laughs> and to uh have a senior level monk uh, say that it's uh, amazing um as i continue to my studies and practice um additionally i would like to add what uh venerable kusala said is that and and i hope to inspire all of our listeners <clears throat> about the pro- protective aspect of the recollections uh, found in the visuti maga the the four protective meditation function and what we mean by that is uh, the analogy of a house and how well you patch up your roof so that water does not leak like your mind is a house and you know when you do something when you dedicate and commit your intention right intention no way for path into the diligent practice with right effort that you fully commit to patch up your house once we identify the problem within the mind whatever that problem is greed anger delusion um if we are ignorant of the four noble truth if if we are honest to ourselves then we will pinpoint surgical precision as to where that leak is and we should fix that as long as it takes and we should not half half blank <laughs> uh, uh half finish it right? we should not we should not just do it and then run away or and leave it the way that it is just like scrubbing the dishes you want to get it nice and squeaky until it's squeak and that is how you know that you got it you're confident uh you know full faith and confident that you got it down you got down buddha nusati you got down recollection of the dhamma uh, the triple gem you got down everything mm-hmm. additionally after uh, telling you all to patch up your roof and do it the right way and do it thoroughly slowly carefully and effectively i also like to invite everyone to also test the teachings and also to go out in order to see uh the four sights that the buddha saw one after one has studied the recollections one want to go out in society and uh, volunteer at a hospital volunteer at a homeless shelter and ask yourself you know if these individuals would have benefited and how does mindfulness of death mindfulness of the body um uh, mindfulness of uh, generosity mindfulness of the sangha could could benefit you and mm-hmm. could benefit other people because as we look at this and we look at our world right now we see that buddhism is the most effective and comprehensive educational system the world has ever seen Mm. no school teaches this and no school give us the the method the people the method in order to keep themselves in line and operate carefully safely with the one that they love with their family with their group and their society and community and so i just like to you know invite everyone to 
have a sense of curiosity after you study this or practice this, you go out in the world and you, you listen to your friends, you listen to your neighbors and you see, huh, interesting, you know, this person is uh, dealing with uh, uh, procrastination. Mm -hmm. One could benefit from meditating on the emphasis of time, the expediency and urgency of time, which is rooted in Mara Nusati uh, and, and so on. So of course I invite everyone to have a, a creative mind and put yourself in all sorts of scenarios and apply the recollections to such scenarios as it will better prepare you for today and tomorrow and the future ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much Trudeau, uh, for adding more insights in, into the, today's uh, discussion on the Anusati. And I think this, uh, I think we all can try. And as you, as you said, uh, we monks and nuns can try this uh, personally. And also we can encourage others to do the same thing. And uh, I, I know that, you know, uh, for, uh, for many years, I think since 1995, I have been uh, running soup kitchens in downtown Toronto, feeding the homeless people. And uh, I can visualize like, you know, how when, the homeless people see, uh, uh, receives a package, a care package uh, uh, with a lot of stuff. You can see the, 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 the laughter and the smile on their face. And they look up in the sky. They say, thanks God, <laughs> you know, thank you God for sending this divine man to us. <laughs> so they also ask for the help. So the, when uh, you feel kind of negative or when you feel kind of, uh, it's, we all go through some tough time. And during such time, when you think about, you know, when you visualize that, it elevates you, it gives you great energy. Uh, Bhante Jinananda, you have more thoughts to share with us. Yes, Bhante, when I think about the uh, application of Ten Anusati, I think that is one of the things that we should unfold for, listen, for the benefit of listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have already shared are wonderful, how, however, when I think about some Anusati like Devata Anusati and Chaga Anusati, um, I, ju I just want to put these questions to this uh, very uh, uh, high quality panel of bhikkhus and nuns. Uh, what do you say about Devata Anusati? So basically it is said in the discourses that you are, you are recollecting about uh, the Deva, those... Uh, the beings who have done some merits and now you're thinking about them, just what exactly they made for and what, what helped them to be like that. So what do you thought about it? I just want to put these questions to each and everyone. And when you come to Chaga Anusati, uh, is that only generosity uh, uh, that you uh, practice with material things? On how can you keep your mind on these uh, uh, actions you do for a certain period of time and how long you have to think about it and or re recollect about it in order to bring one pointedness. I think uh, Venerable Ananda, I think, uh, said that that uh, this meditation uh, lead us to uh, gain samadhi and vitakka He mentioned about the vitakka vichar. So what, what can you say about it? That's my question. And uh, since I do not talk about uh, anything of this after this uh, contribution, I just want to say that the best thing for many people to do in the in terms of taking these uh, ten recollection, according to the tradition, is to avoid five hindrances. So we the first lay, uh, first line of uh, unwholesomeness we have to overcome either by any type of meditation is to attack these five hindrances and bring samadhi into mind. So I think uh, uh, while we use these 10, ten recollection or any of those uh, according to personal uh, you know, taste, for different reasons, the, the tradition says us to overcome uh, five hindrances. So I, I would like uh, uh, to say that because uh, if you look at the entire Tripitaka, uh, particularly one sutta called Ganaka Moggalana, Buddha advised, uh, advised a particular monk to uh, uh, do this type of recollection in order to get him ready for uh, big training. So I think uh, 
uh, that's what I want to say uh, uh, at last. So I would like monks to talk about how to how do we practice Devatanusati and Chaganusati in a given period and what exactly way we think about it. Thank you. Wonderful. That's a that's a great question. I think uh, I, uh, if no one can uh, say anything, I will add something later. But I see two hands raised. Uh, Bante Shantasobana from uh, California. Uh, un un uh, unmute yourself. So thank you for the question that the Venerable G raised up. That I want to go into the, the Devata Anusati. Yeah. So when it comes to our human life, we have to uh, we have to understand it's, uh, it's me, me most of us uh, based with the, the our self-centered mind. And uh, we always try to look into the look into world that uh, believing that what we experience is the the right place but i think that uh, when it come to devata anusati it's give us uh, opportunity to reframe our own point of view regarding the existence so that is a very important place because now out of this all all we look for the change or the transformation that that for that transformation, if we don't have uh, any kind of uh, goal, it is very difficult because we just we all depend on the very conventional mind. So and at the same time, we can't give a kind of like a lower existence. Then it it kind of like a give us a kind kind of like a very negative way of understanding. So the devata anusati give us a opportunity for us to to move forward and at the same time it it helped us to come out of this moment and go into a more better higher place so consciously when the person have as as, as example uh, that uh, if you are capable to imagine something you are capable to become like that way so like that when when we look into when when we have intention to look into a more higher place, even though we don't reach to that, what happened deeply inside us, there is a deeper, that the transformation happened within the place, the, the gravity that hold itself with, uh, with us. So that transformation that help us to, to, to release the, our own point of view. And uh, so that way, it, 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 when it comes to the very conventional life, look at the world. That just uh, rather than looking at a homeless person and asking, oh, you want to be a homeless person? Or if you look, if you point out a millionaire and ask someone, you want to be a millionaire? And the people like to go towards that way. So, like that, that when we come to the Devata Anusati and when we know how they become Devas, when we know the stories, when we know the path and how you can become like that way in it itself help us to motivate and help us to become better people that the same like that what the buddha did to the nanda you know yeah. <laughs> it's a kind of like a tactic you know giving a candy but at the same time it has a deeper purpose to to bring a more or a bigger transformation yeah yeah i think it's it's a, it's a way of uh, transforming oneself uh, Maybe it's something like that. You become what you think. Yes. <laughs> you be, something like, okay, I, I see uh, another hand raised, uh, Bante, Gina, uh, Bante Vansananda from Buffalo, New York, New York State. Bante uh, thank you, Enrabel. And uh, so all the Enrabels uh, and especially Venerable Kema will ex explain the things. And uh, what you are discussing, discussing this uh, topic about the uh, last question from the Bante Jinanandu. So the Devata Anusati, I think I, I would like to add some, uh, some kind of things. Uh, when uh, we think about the Dibba Sota, Dibba Chakku, it is means uh, the little bit beyond the, as human uh, naked, so, so, uh, being the naked eye and naked ear. 
So the the basot, uh, what what you cannot see, devas can see. What you cannot hear, devas can hear. So that's something better than you you may uh, add this kind of the qualities what devas have. And another point we can add uh, in the Kuddakanikaya we found uh, the Buddha has mentioned there are three kind of devas. Uh, Upati deva mm. in the, by birth devas and uh, uh, Samuti deva conventional deva and uh, Visuddha deva the, by making mind uh, supreme uh, state uh, you become the deva. I mean the Upati Deva, uh, where are the Deva, divine worlds who born, they they call Upati Deva. And uh, who become uh, in the in the society, some people become very uh, powerful and very blessed, and uh, everyone respected people become like devas. They it is called Samuti Deva. And uh, Visuddha Deva, uh, whoever eradicated all the defilement from mind and cleaned the mind, uh, liberated ones, uh, Arahanta, uh, Pacheka Buddha, and Samma Sambuddha, those are the Visuddha Devas. Mm. They, then, when we recollect the, the Devata Anusati, uh, you may uh, think of all that uh, qualities too. I think so. I'd like to add that. But. No, I, I see that's a great point, Bhante Vansananda. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how you brought it up. It's uh, uh, Sammuti Deva, God by convention, uh, Uppati Deva, God by birth, and uh, Visuddha Deva, God by purity. And purity. It's basically, this uh, form of meditation, maybe, uh, maybe it's a kind of uh, idea. Let's say, if you have a devil mind, <laughs> <laughs> satanic mind you're going to be devil i said you're going to be suffering a lot so how do you transform that devil mind so you this is kind of a strategy okay how uh, you need to devil mind is a lower mind <laughs> so you have to elevate that mind to the higher level higher consciousness so i think in, in traditionally people believe the deva world is a, is a higher perspective, higher consciousness. So I think uh, we, we can discuss more, but we don't have uh, much time. We have come to the end of uh, this uh, discussion, today's discussion. And I know uh, uh, you have more to share, more to talk. And I know, uh, Sister Kema, you're, you're raising your hand. I can give you just one minute, okay? One minute to share your last thought. Unplug yourself. So unmute, unmute yourself. Sister Kema, unmute. Sister Kema, you have to unmute. I clicked the wrong spot, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we all are agreeing that if you change your mind, you change your life. Yeah. This is, one of, this is what we're doing. And, and telling people that they look at you kind of funny and say, how can that happen? And if, if someone argues with me that it's not possible, I'm stuck. I, I say there's nobody stuck. The wonderful thing about the Buddha is nobody is stuck mm. uh, because you can always change. So when you're stuck, I sometimes even laugh. I have to watch when I laugh with who, but I, you know, I believed I was totally stuck and uh, they unstuck me, they unstuck me. <laughs> and then I could tell someone else, I'm not, you're not stuck. Nobody gets to be stuck anymore uh, because whatever arises because of a Nietzsche, it's going to change. So if you don't know what to do and you're stuck, 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 take 10 minutes, it will change and you can change it by what we're teaching you. That yeah. is the wonderful thing about this. You yeah. can change it by repetition. And the science tells us precisely in, in how the habits can change. They don't happen overnight. We don't fix you. I don't fix you. 
don't know about anybody else, but I don't fix you. I show you how you can fix yourself. And if through repetition, you can let go of the old neural pathway of the habitual tendency and habit that was wrong by replacing it again and again and again through repetition with the new tendency, which is the purification and retraining. And that's how you change your mind. And yeah. the, I didn't know for sure till one of my students called me and said, I've been doing it just as you say for two months. And you know, something happened today and it's exactly what you said. I didn't even make it happen. And I let go and I changed and I did loving kindness and forgiveness instead. I did it automatically. And that's what we're doing here. These, yeah. these, are, these are practices once a day or if during retreats or however long uh, that you, you uh, are doing it in your routine and your discipline, it's teaching you discipline. Yeah. And discipline is not with us a lot today. Yeah, it's, it's also you know? something, like, it's, it's something like it's a rehearsing, challenge. right? There are people do go for rehearsal, exactly. they become better at it. So even if you do it a little bit each day, you yeah. are working to let go of the old way, put the new way in place of it. We're not yeah. telling you, let it go, let it go, eradicate it. <laughs> We're telling you, change it change and replace it. it. That's the big piece the Buddha was teaching. So Thank you, you, Sister Kema. Uh, today, That's we had a Marley. great discussion. We had such a wonderful discussion on, uh, on the Dasa Anasati. I know we did not go through every... Uh, recollection in detail, uh, but you know, I think these are uh, 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 the therapies uh, given to 10 types of uh, the psychological, emotional struggles that people have. And uh, so it, this is wonderful to practice and we all can try. So I'm very grateful to all of you for uh, sharing your uh, insights, wisdom, knowledge with us. And uh, in fact, in a listening to you you know i'm learning much more <laughs> so i'm benefiting from this discussion you all are well versed in dhamma so uh let us conclude today's uh, biblically discussion uh by reciting the over the patimokka verses so i would uh, respectfully uh, invite bante uparatana from washington dc to <laughs> <laughs> to recite the over the patimokka verses uh, I, uh please unmute and Thank you, all the venerable. May you well, happy and peace and long life and uh, stay with the Dhamma. Sab papas akar nang kusalas upasampada sachit pariyodapanang E tam buddhan sasanam Kanti paraman tapo titika Nibbanam paraman vadanti buddha Nahi pab jito parupagati Samanu hoti parang vihet yantu Anupavadu anupagato Pati mokecha sangvaru Matanyuta cha bhatanta samming Santanch Sayanasanang Adi Chitte Cha Ayogo Etang Buddhan Sasanang Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you, Bhante Paratana, for beautifully reciting those who are the Upadimokka verses from the Dhammapada. Is very beautiful. Those are the key teachings of the Buddha you have recited. And I'm very grateful to all the venerable monks and nuns for your presence today and for making such a great contribution, uh, sharing your words of wisdom, the Dhamma, with our friends uh, online. And uh, I know uh, there are people who are really benefiting from these discussions. So I'm very grateful to you. 
and uh, I'm hoping to see all of you in two weeks time for next uh, biweekly discussion. Into, so uh, we, I will send you an email with the uh, Dhamma topic. So until then, uh, may you all have the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha for your health and safety. Uh, may devas, celestial beings continue to protect and guard you with the divine blessings. Thank you so much and good night from Canada. <laughs>